Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to make at virtually no cost a lead dioxide electrode that you can use as a replacement for an expensive platinum electrode. Such an electrode can be perfectly suitable depending on the type of electrolysis that you want to do. Let us see what we need. I have here an old pan that I got in a thrift store for two dollars or something like that and I'm going to use it in order to melt the lead now where does the lead come from well don't buy it you can simply recycle lead that you can found anywhere for example you can recycle old plumbing pipes in my case the lead comes from uh, an old core battery okay so this is dirty lead it doesn't matter just put it in the pan and we are going to melt it now in order to give the lead the shape of an electrode I'm going to pour it into this metal sheet that I folded in order to make an angle okay now the metal of course you don't want it to be copper otherwise the lead will just be soldered to it uh, but you can use um, aluminum or uh, this I think it's zinc okay anyway I checked that the lead doesn't stick to it okay so this is ready and let me put the lead onto the stove and let me try to turn this on all right and let's wait a little bit Now you may want to pour a little bit of borax onto the melted lead that will serve as flux. It will help the lead to phase separate from the impurities and um, it also helps to, to melt it. Now there is way too much lead for making a lead electrode but I can keep the leftover and melt it later. Alright, let's try. that should be okay okay so this is what I ended up with and now we want to make this look a little bit nicer so we can start by cutting uh, these things with some snips okay. alright that's already better and then we can finish by using a file and giving it exactly the shape that we want and here is the result after I use some steel wool so beautiful and shiny now I'm going to cut it because it's a little bit too long for my needs alright cut so now I want to solder a wire here since it's an electrode it needs to be connected to some power supply so I want to solder this uh, wire with this plug onto the tip of this electrode so let me first uh, strip the wire and this should work Alright, put a little bit of flux onto the wire and first let me let me do this and then Put 
first some shrinking tubing onto the wire so that we can have a nice finish and also add a little bit of flux onto the lead that will help the solder to stick to it all right so done and now uh, we can put all right all right perfect and now uh, let us shrink And there we are, we have a nice lead electrode and now we want to turn it into a lead dioxide electrode. So let me show you how to achieve this. Now in order to turn this lead electrode into a lead dioxide electrode, you will need a copper electrode, this is just some standard tubing and you will also need some 30% concentrated sulfuric acid. Now I propose three options for this uh, sulfuric acid. Either you can purchase it in an auto store like uh, AutoZone or O'Reilly. Uh, it's an acid for car battery. It's typically 30% concentrated. Another option is to use some drain opener from the lightning liquid lining brand it's virgin sulfuric acid and i measured the concentration to be uh, about 93 percent so we have to dilute it properly this is the option that i'm going to use today so i'm going to show you how to properly dilute the acid but before that let me propose another option you can also watch one of my tutorials in which i show how to turn uh, copper sulfate into sulfuric acid or epsom salt into sulfuric acid so these are all other options that you can use but today let me show you how to properly dilute this 93% sulfuric acid into 30% sulfuric acid your sulfuric acid may have a concentration different from mine so let us call it C and let us call m sub c its mass and m sub t the mass of pure sulfuric acid molecules that it contains. By definition, the concentration is the ratio of the mass of pure acid to the total mass m sub p over m sub c. What we want to do is to determine the mass of water m sub w that we need to add for the concentration to drop down to 30%. This means that we want the ratio of the mass of pure sulfuric acid, m sub p, to the total mass after adding water, m sub c plus m sub w, to be equal to 0.3. By dividing the first equation by the second one, we obtain the mass of water that we need to add. However, it is usually more convenient to work with volumes rather than with masses. We make the connection with volumes by using the definition of mass density. The density of water d sub w is equal to 1 gram per milliliter by definition. And the density of my sulfuric acid is 1.82 gram per milliliter. Substituting in the previous equation, we obtain the relationship between the volume of water that needs to be added and the volume of acid that we want to dilute. Thus, in my case, the volume of water that I need to add is 3.82 times the volume of acid that I want to dilute, 
and I am going to approximate this number as 4 times. So I have here 50 ml of 93% sulfuric acid and I'm going to dilute it as I explained so I need to add 4 times the volume of water, distilled water. So here this is a beaker that contains 250 ml so I'm going to put 200 ml of distilled water and then I will add the acid. Remember we shouldn't pour water into acid instead we need to pour the acid into the water. So 200 ml of distilled water and then 50 ml of 93% sulfuric acid. Pour it slowly because this produce this produces a lot of heat. Yeah, it's already hot. And uh, we may want to let the solution cool down. Now that the solution is cold, we want to put the electrodes in, in it. So here, my lead electrode. Make sure that it is clean. Scrub it again with some steel wool. We don't want any pollution to go into the solution. Try to kind of secure the electrode. That's good enough. And then the copper electrode, again, scrub it with some steel wool in order to make sure that it is clean. So now we want to plug this to a power supply and I like to use an adjustable voltage supply but maybe you don't have any so uh, what you can do is to use batteries and uh, some resistors in order to limit the current. The point is that you don't want a current that is too large otherwise the coating with dioxide onto the lead won't be uniform. Okay, so I didn't mention it, but um, the lead electrode should be connected to the positive side and the copper electrode to the negative side. So here I'm going to adjust the voltage so that I have a current no greater than um, 100 milliamps. So. I mean, it doesn't have to be precise. Here, yeah, 70 amps, sorry, 70 milliamps, 80. All right, 0 0.1 amp, 100 milliamps. Now, as uh, the electrolysis is progressing, this current may change, so you may need to adjust the voltage later. But it's okay, it doesn't have to be exactly 0.1 amp. Uh, it's just that I found that this value works well. It can be greater or smaller. Okay, now it's okay, now it's 110 milliamps, that's fine. Okay, so let us see what is going what is going on here. At the cathode, the copper electrode, we have some bubbles. Uh, which should be hydrogen, okay, and the, um, the lead electrode is being covered with dioxide, okay, so well let us wait 
for let's say 20 minutes and we'll see what turns out okay it has been only two minutes and we can see that the electrode is already well coated so I guess I can stop here I'm going to rinse it and then I'll show you the final result here is the final result lead dioxide electrode don't touch it with your fingers because you don't want to put any grease on it you want to keep you want to keep it cl as clean as possible okay if you like this video please give it thumbs up share it on your social network and write a comment thanks for watching